There we go. I'm not late. Everything's fine. <sighs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Cubone. My curtains are open, and my name is Quentin. We had a bit of an interesting week. I've had some discussions on whether or not I'm going to continue covering this game. John and I just spent the better part of two hours discussing the pros and cons of the game. I have a Dr. Pepper. Without any further ado, we're going to get ahead to the news segment of the game. Last Tuesday morning, we were on track with Errata Prime to complete the previous major order, clearing out Errata Prime touring Akamar 4 and Fact Bay, nearly 20% and well on its way to being completed by the end of the day. Though it did fall off through the day, but by Wednesday, just before 6 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time, we had completed Errata Prime. Akamar 4 might have been a little slower, but with an estimated 12 hours to liberation by 4.30 Mountain Daylight Time and just under two days to complete the major order, there was no need to panic just yet. Unfortunately, with divers prioritizing the major order, it meant that the new defense of Acer Pass was short on divers. With 16 hours to go, we were 1.26% shy of the liberation rate needed, with no sign of that changing anytime soon. Very quickly moving to Thursday, despite player count dropping from 40,000 to 10,000, we still managed to clear Akamar 4 by 7.15 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time. This left us with roughly 28 hours to complete the major order, and with an estimated 26 hours until the liberation of Fact Bay, it was impossible to tell whether we'd make it or not. Through the day, the liberation rate grew, and by the end of the day, Fact Bay was at nearly 85%, with an estimated two and a half hours to completion. Nearly seven times the speed needed to beat the clock on the Major Order. Super Earth decided to start the celebrations for the Major Order early, however, releasing a new trailer for the Viper Commandos War Bond, releasing June 13th. While my official review won't come out until after this video, I'm personally really looking forward to it. As things slowed for the night, it wasn't until just before 5.30 that the Major Order would complete, but there was no time to rest, as at 5.31, a new Major Order began. New Major Order! Our analysts have identified a large automaton data center, codenamed Database 1, deep within automaton territory. It is protected by exceptionally robust encryption protocols. Whatever data is stored there, much effort has been expended to keep it hidden. The Helldivers are ordered to liberate the planet, capturing Database 1 and allowing manual extraction of the data. The major order to take Wasat was going to be difficult, the planet hidden within the depths of the bot's territory. There is a strategic guidance going through that. Super Earth High Command advises all Helldivers that the shortest path to liberate Wasat, the target of the current major order, is through the following systems. Wezen, then, or Weezen, I'm not sure, then Vega Bay, then finally Wasat itself. High Command offers this guidance in order to conserve Helldivers critical decision-making effort for use on the battlefield itself. As of Friday morning, we had taken to Wezen on the Western Front. Despite 20,000 divers planetside, it alone was estimated to take three days, the same as the Major Order's deadline. The dedication of the Helldivers never wavered, however, and by noon of Saturday, Wezen had been cleared. I'll be honest, I'm not 100% sure what happened, as the graph looks like this. What the f- <laughs> what happened? Some kind of glitch must have happened on Helldivers IO because pff, I don't know. I do know that divers immediately took to Vega Bay, raising it just under 13% by Saturday night, with the liberation expected to be over in less than a day giving us just under another day for the liberation of Wasat. By Sunday morning, we were still on track, estimated time to liberation dropping to under 15 hours, which could leave us 28 hours for Wasat. Not much else to report from Sunday, as Vega Bay's player count maxed out at 50,000, and shortly later, at around 7 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, the planet was liberated. Within an hour, nearly 40,000 had moved to Wasat, raising it to 20% as Sunday rolled around to Monday. The timing was going to be tight, but it seemed like we might make it, even as the defense on a statue that had begun that morning was being lost. This data the automatons had had better be worth it. Monday kept all the divers' teeth clenched through the entire day, but just past 8 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, we wiped the last of the Wasat bot infrastructure from the planet. I cannot express how proud I am of the Helldivers today. We were low on reinforcements, averaging 50 to 60,000 players per day on Steam. Despite this, we cleared three planets of bot influence in as many days, 
and we gain some very important intel. Major order success, database one has been captured and it's encryption breached by intrepid thief cyberware specialist. Mm. I, I did it slow, so I'd read it right and I still got it wrong. Breached by intrepid thief cyber warfare specialists. The vast trove of information will take months to fully parse, but key intel has already been discovered. The automatons appear to be planning some sort of massive terraforming project on Cyberstan itself. Other decoded data includes detailed recordings of the impact of the Terminid super colony. Other keywords are referenced numerous times throughout the data trove without additional details. Vessel 00, Nucleus, the Final Collective, and others. As our analysts continue to decode the vast database, new intel may be gleaned that will aid in our resistance. For now, our strategic objective is confirmed on the automaton front. Cyberstan is once again our target. I'm incredibly curious about the three words there, Vessel 00, Nucleus, and the Final Collective. These strike me as the next three stages of the bot's terrible plans, and the only way we can stop them is to get to Cyberstan and wipe them out for good. Let me know in the comments what this could mean and, and how we should prepare. Personally, I think that this could have to do with the Meridian Black Hole. The bots we know are quite devious, so they could very well take some sort of vessel to the Nucleus of the Black Hole, and the Final Collective could be summoning their ancient allies, the Illuminate, to overtake democracy on Super Earth. But only time will tell. Until then, we must continue towards Cyberstan. Before we could do so, however, a new major order began. High Command has received two urgent requests for aid on planets that recently fell to the automaton occupation. An emergency distress call from Vernon Wells describes thousands of civilian survivors trapped in the remains of Super Citizen Anne's Hospital for Very Sick Children. That is a mouthful. Food and water supplies are dwindling, their survival even this long after the fall of the Sea Recruitment Facility on Vernon and Wells is remarkable. Without imminent rescue, they will soon perish of starvation, thirst, or automaton butchery. Meanwhile, however, intercepted automaton communications have identified a large explosives repository on Marfark. Intel assesses with high confidence that these explosives came from Chu, stolen during the initial automaton invasion. These stores are very likely to contain critical raw ingredients necessary to finally deploy MD-17 anti-tank mines. Time is not on our side. Only the first planet liberated is likely to be saved. The hell divers are trusted to determine which course of action, rescuing the children or the anti-tank mines will ultimately save the most freedom. So this is likely our last chance to get the mines, but already players are intent on saving the future of liberty, the children. I wrote that this morning. That's actually been kind of interesting throughout the day to see there's a very almost even split in the hell divers community between those that don't care about the mines because we haven't cared about them before why should we care now we're obviously going to go after the children but then there's also been an equal or at least mostly equal amount of hell divers going forward and saying hey who cares about the kids we want a new stratagem so let's go after the tank mines and frankly i don't care about either situation <laughs> i want i want new stuff i uh, getting new things in hell divers 2 is always going to be probably the top priority because we we've kind of stress tested everything we have almost as far as it'll go not quite but almost but then the children that are on the other side of this it, it feels a little bit like bait doesn't it because they know we haven't gone for the anti-tank mines in the past they know we've been trying to take vernon wells back this entire time and so they put the less interesting option there so i'm very curious if we do go after the children how that's going to turn out if there is some kind of trap before we can do either however we have to get through eris pass a task that could take up to 33 hours as of this afternoon but now is fluctuating at the start of the stream, it was sitting at just under the necessary liberation rate with the bots taking it back with an estimated time to loss uh, about a day. This continued on to Wednesday, and as Wednesday kicked off, Acer Pass grew to almost 75%, fluctuating heavily between liberation rates. The planet was finally cleared around 3 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, and to my surprise, Prize, only 6,000 divers went to Marfark, with over 33,000 instead choosing to secure Liberty's future on Vernon Wells. With the liberation rate fluctuating between one and two days, it seemed we'd have time to clear it, but what about Marfark? In the major order, it says only the first planet we liberate is likely to be saved. I say we call Arrowhead's bluff and save both. We have four days to save the two planets, and given what we just achieved, getting through three planets in roughly the same amount of time, I truly believe we can do it. And that's all I've got for my notes today.
I'm very much looking forward to the new war bond tomorrow and I'll be working on that video tomorrow and Thursday. This video will go up as its own video tomorrow as usual. Beyond that, I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to be doing Helldivers 2 content. I've been enjoying the game. The game is incredibly fun. Uh, to the, uh, it's going to continue to be for me. I, it's just a fun stress relief. But I have to be honest, if I look at my analytics for these videos, a big thing that was keeping me doing them was the numbers. Honestly, they were doing really well. I was getting several thousand views per video, and then they just kind of dropped off. Uh, 45 for the Meridia video, 93 on the the new mission type to turn meridia into a black hole and then 19 on last week's weekly weekly recap if this one also does really bad i might have to shift how i do these because i i'm just not getting the returns i need to be able to do these regularly so if you guys want me to keep doing them please check this video out and subscribe to the channel and let me know that you want me to keep doing them and i happily will that is all for the news segment of today i'm gonna go ahead and move us back to the start screen and then we can get started on the gameplay section so i hope you guys enjoyed remember to be gay and do crimes and we'll see you next time bye bye